Hello everyone, welcome back to the Hybris Tube. In my previous video in chapter 110, we talked about hooks in general. There I explained that hooks are like extension points in a parent flow. If you have a main process running and you want to plug in some extra logic as a side flow without disturbing the parent, you can implement hooks. Now guys, in today's video, we are going to focus on a very practical type of hook in SAP Commerce, which is persistence hooks for integration objects. So what are the topics we are going to cover in this video? We will start our video with a demo of persistence hooks in SAP Hybris. Then guys, we will start seeing what are the persistence hooks, right? And then we will see why do we need them in actual projects in which scenarios we use hooks. Then guys, we will see what are the various types of persistence hooks. We will discuss those types in detail. Then guys, we will see what are the differences between the hooks and interceptors. In which situation we use the hooks concept and in which situation we use the interceptors concept. We will discuss all these things in detail. Finally, guys, we will see the implementation of various persistence hooks, right? I will show you an end-to-end practical example of implementation of pre-persistence hooks and post-persistence hooks which are the two types of the persistence hooks also guys i have uploaded a detailed written guide on this topic on the hybris tube platform inside that guide you will also find the code examples so you can try them directly into your project if you are already a Hybris2 member and watching this on our platform, you can access to this and the interview question chapters related to the integration objects and hooks in module 30. If you are not our member yet and you are watching this video on YouTube, don't worry, you can request the access to this guide using the link provided in the comment section of this video. Now, before we jump into the theory, let's start with a quick demo of persistence hooks so that you know exactly what we are going to create in this video. So guys, as you can see, currently I am into the flexible search console in HSE and you can see I am trying to get a data from one of the table which is created into the hybrid. The table name is training document. And as you can see currently in this table, there is no data present, right? But now I have created an integration object. How to create the integration object? I have explained this already in the previous video. So guys, as you can see over here, I have this item type training document. And because of this item type, a table in the hybrid database will get created with the name training documents. In this item type, we have code as one attribute, which is of type string. Then we have a doc name as another attribute, which is of type string. Then we have doc type as another attribute, which is of type enum, right? Right. This is a enum. Doc type is a enum, right? And then we have a search strings as another attribute, which is of type search string list. And search string list is a collection of strings, right? So these are the attributes we have. If I go into the HSC, you can see this is the HSE flexible search console and here I am trying to fire a query on the same item type which I showed you so here you can see in this item type or in this table right the training documents table we don't have any data currently now I have created an integration object on this training document item type how to create the integration object I have already explained this concept in chapter 113 but still I will briefly explain about creation of integration object in some time again now guys imagine you send this json to hybris via integration api where code is d0c001 doc name is getting started guide right this is the name of the guide you want to keep right and then third attribute is doc type right here you are stating doc type is a enum right and we have given its value as pdf document right 
but just see or just notice that there are no search strings provided there was another attribute in this item type which was search strings right it's a collection of search string list and as i already told you that this collection is nothing it's a just collection which is of type string right but in my request right in my request i have not stated the search string now guys if i fire this request you will see that uh, data has been created into the hybris database as you can see if i search for this training document item type now you can see in the training documents table we have this data created right here you can see the code value is same right which i pass through the request so you can see the code value is d0c001 right the same code value you see over here and then doc name is also the same getting started guide right so, so this is the same doc name you had passed over here and then third is doc type right which is the enum right so that's why the corresponding pk value you will see over here right so this is also expected but over here you can see we even have the search string right so this means after persistence in the database right in the database this request looks like this so this happened because the pre persist hook enriched the data before saving the data into the database and immediately after saving the log so notification sent to the training document which is d0c001 that was the post persist hook in action so in this video guys i will explain step by step how this works and how you can implement pre persist hook and how you can implement post persist hook in your projects so guys next part is what are persistence hooks in sap hybrids so persistence hooks are extensions provided by the integration api in sap commerce whenever we send inbound data to hybrids for example from erp crm oms or any external system the integration api is received at json converts it into a model and persists it into the database but here is the catch sometime that inbound data is incomplete or invalid or maybe it needs some enrichment before or after saving that data into the database that's where the persistence hooks come into the picture so we can inject our custom java logic before saving the data into the database using the pre persist hook and after saving the data into the database using the post persist hook i hope now you understand what are the various types of the hooks right and what is the use of these type of hooks right so guys the next topic is why we need persistence hooks where in actual project scenarios we use the persistence concept in hybris so guys i can give you some real project scenarios where i have personally used these hooks concept the first one is the data validation for example an erp system is sending us the orders but sometimes and this happens in actual cases as well but sometimes it sends an order without currency right so if an order comes without currency we should not save that order information into the database right so with a pre persist hook we can reject it before saving it into the database so i hope now it's clear right that this is how we can use the pre persist hook right for the actual project scenarios second example can be data enrichment sometime external systems don't send seo keywords or derived attributes so we can auto generate them before save using a pre persist hook right the third one is business triggers so let's say we receive an invoice from the erp system and once the invoice is saved into hybris database we want to notify erp that invoice has been saved into the hybris database successfully right or we want to send an email to them right that's the perfect case for post persist hook right that we will send an email to a set of users or 
we will notify the ERP that invoice has been saved into the Hybris database successfully. In such cases, we will use the post persist hook. Next practical use of persistence hooks is auditing or logging. Many projects have compliance requirements. With hooks, we can log the payloads before and after persistence. So basically, hooks gives us flexibility and control over how external data enters our SAP Commerce system. I hope guys, now it's clear to you where actually we use this persistence concept in actual project scenarios as well. Why I am emphasizing on the actual project scenarios because this is the real question which is asked to you into the interviews that please tell me how you have used this topic in actual project scenario. So make sure every time you learn any topic, you should also evaluate how I can use this topic in actual project scenarios. So guys, the next topic is life cycle walkthrough of persistence hooks. So guys, let's quickly walk through the life cycle. Here you can see guys, an inbound OData REST API request also called the integration API arrives into the hybrid system. This request carries a JSON payload. Here in the first step guys, you can see JSON is converted into the model object. So here this JSON payload is automatically converted into a hybrid model object. This is the standard behavior of the integration framework. Right here in the second step, guys, you can see before saving this model into the database, pre-persist hooks gets triggered. This is where you can enrich the data, validate fields, or even stop the persistence completely if the data doesn't meet your criteria. Right here in the step three, guys, actual persistence of the data into the database happens. So once the pre-persist hook has executed, model is persisted into the database. This is the actual persistence step. And this is exactly where the term persistence hook comes from, right? I hope it is clear to you. In the step four, guys, in the step four, post persistence hooks come into the picture. After the model has been saved successfully, the post persist hook is triggered. This is super powerful because here you can integrate with external systems, trigger workflows, write or send emails or even execute any custom logic that needs to happen after persistence. I hope guys, now the whole life cycle is clear to you. Now in part five, guys, we will see the end-to-end -end steps for the implementation of persistence hooks. So what all are the steps for the implementation of pre-persist hook and for the implementation of post-persist hook? We will see all those steps in this part. So we will start. So guys, this is all about the pre-persist hook and post-persist hook. I have explained you in detail what is the use of pre-persist hook, what is the use of post-persist hook, how these hooks are used in actual projects and how to create these hooks from the scratch. And then I have also explained you how to use this or how to call these hooks from the integration object concept. I hope guys, this video will be super useful for you. And if you like this video, please share this channel with your friends. Thank you for watching. Bye.